Hello and welcome to a live Kerfeffy break on Deep Program with Carrie Smith. Uh, thank you for joining me today. It is Friday, August 5th. Very excited about today. I've got a fabulous guest who I haven't spoken to in a long time. And uh, later today, just one quick announcement, I'm going to be on Friday Night Tights. So if you guys want to come hang out, that should be a fun time. Um, what else? Please hit like and subscribe. I need to just record something that says that so I don't forget and just play it. If, you, if it's your first time here, this is a live show we do Mondays and Fridays where we hang out and talk about the world and life. And um, you're welcome to share the video if you enjoy it. My guest today is always interesting guest. Her name is Julianne Davis. She's an actress who uh, was in Eyes Wide Shut, which is a film some of you may have seen. And she's got a new movie out called Fear Frequency. Please welcome Julianne Davis. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy to get to talk to you again. So I, I I know whenever I talk to you, you guys, if you if you're just listening, I'll tell you, whenever I talk to Julianne, I know it's gonna go be like a very interesting, broad reaching conversation. So I told you I was like, we could do current events or we could do big picture. And you said, I like big picture. <laughs> so so do I. Every so. time. And it's such a pleasure to talk to you again, Carrie. I I Always have a great time talking to you, and we are never lost for words, that's for sure. That's true. Can you, for anybody who may not have seen the, my first interview with you, can you just tell people a little about your background? You're you're like a, a real rebel in, when it comes to like Hollywood and actresses. You're, you're an actual resistance person, I think. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I started um, waking up, not woke. <laughs> waking up um, right around, I'm a 9-11 conservative, put it that way. Okay. And um, I was in the closet for many years um, because obviously people look down on any kind of thinking that is not more on the left. So it was around 2015 that um, I was asked by a, a journalist, an English journalist that I knew to write an article or two. And then I just slowly started to voice my opinion via these articles. Um, and then this magazine, which was Heat Street, finished. And then I went over to Fox News and I pitched a bunch of articles to them because one of their editors from Heat Street went to Fox. And so when I pitched the articles, they, I, one of the articles was talking about um, what my experience has been in Hollywood as I've been coming out. And, you know, and I just said how, um, how many acquaintances have ditched me, how they called me every name in a book, in the book, like, an, you know, effing C and you word. Mean and all coming, this. Yeah. coming out as a conservative. Yes. Yeah. 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 So pretty much the network that I did have is like, <laughs> pretty well gone. I mean, there's a few people that that will still talk to me that are totally apolitical um, mm -hmm. publicly, you know, but um, most people don't. Most people won't talk to me anymore. And you know what? At first I was thinking, you know, I, I don't mind, um, you know, what you believe and I would be happy to work with you either way. But I hate to say this, as time goes on, and the polarization gets deeper. Um, I I don't see that they're not people I want to work with. Mm. You know, I mean, I hate to say it, but I just think that there's so much on the left that is showing itself to be fully evil. Yeah, really evil. Um, it disguises itself, but to me, it's just clear as day. And so I, I don't want to have anything to do with it in that respect, yeah. you know? And so, I know you don't use that word evil lightly. No, I don't because, you know, and it's, it's weird because on the left, they talk about being kind, but it's such a cloaked word for what it really means is acceptance of evil and debauchery. Mm. That's really what it is, you know? And I mean, look, I can't, it's not like I can sit there and say, oh, you know, I'm a real Puritan. I mean, the world see me naked and eyes wide shut. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, at the same time, I think, no, you know, we, we really in the West have really, really, really lost our way. Yeah. And, you and that's, and that's the fault of, of conservatives as well, you know, because we were always ones to say, 
um, you know, live and let live. And um, that has proven to be truly, truly detrimental um, for the West. Yeah. It's like the sheep saying, live, let, let the wolves live and let live. It's fine. You know, I, I just have a couple of people in the chat. I'm very excited. Rib says, I love you already. Um, <laughs> thank you, Rib. <laughs> and Ken Lipson says, Carrie, please ask her about Kubrick. Well, I don't know. What do you want me to ask her? Did you enjoy working on that movie? Um, you know, it was pretty grueling. Um, mm. It was wonderful meeting him. Um, I'd say that was probably the best aspect. And I also really enjoyed working with Tom. Um, whatever people say about him and Scientology, uh, we didn't speak about that at all. I just felt like it was an, uh, an, a subject I couldn't talk about. But as an actor, he's absolutely professional, totally respectful, um, really lovely, gives 100% all that. Um, Stanley, we had some great conversations. Um, I, I, I'm very grateful to him because I, I don't think that if it had been left up to casting directors or Warner Brothers or whatever, I don't think they would have chosen me. Mm. I think they would have chosen a bigger name. Um, I believe Ava Heretzkova was in line, but she didn't want to do it because of the nudity. Um, and I was virtually at the time pretty unknown. Uh, so for, for Stanley to choose me, I'm very grateful. And I just wish that now with the way I feel about life and the way I see the world and what I believe to be true now, I would absolutely adore to talk to Stanley again and have yeah. a real heart to heart. But I was a lot younger then. You know a lot more now. And yeah. that movie, what an interesting subject matter, because in a lot of ways, it's about this sort of dark underbelly, this evil. It actually um, is. And I didn't even realize it at the time. That's the crazy thing. And I, I think that's the wonderful thing about all of Stanley's films is that there's different layers to them, especially this one, probably more this one and than any of his films. But there's layers to this that depending upon where you are in your life, become unlocked and, mm -hmm. and open to you. And, and then you start seeing more things. It's, it's really fascinating. So that's why I'd say I, I'd, I'd love to talk to him more about that. I mean, there's aspects of Eyes Wide Shut in Lolita, actually. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Uh -huh. I, should, I, I don't know if I've seen that one. Oh, oh can you, will you believe that? You must. It's one of his best. Wow. So tell me a little bit about uh, your new film, uh, Fear Frequency. Yes. And I can't wait to see it. I'm sorry I didn't get to watch it yet. It's okay. Um, well, so what's really interesting is that, um, so as you said, I'm a rebel. And I don't believe in going with the crowd. I don't believe in groupthink. I believe in independent thinking. I am a true individualist. I believe in individualism. And so, and I've always been a bit of an outsider, even when I was younger. Um, so when we in California had this lockdown, here it is, what is it? February, March of 2020. And I was talking to a director friend of mine and I had this idea about a storyline and I told her the idea about this woman trapped in her house, blah, blah, blah. And she loved the idea and she talked to a friend of hers who was an acquaintance of mine. And the three of us decided to write the story. And then the two of them, because the other guy is a script writer mainly, um, he, he and her wrote the actual um, screenplay. And then in July of 2020, while we were still locked down, while SAG was still not allowing people to shoot, we just went, well, and made it. screw that and we'll just do it anyway. <laughs> you know, I don't see the point in following a rule if it's a useless rule. You know, <laughs> lockdown was useless and I, mean, I hate to say it, you know, I, I shouldn't say it. They'll probably kick me out of the, of the union, but SAG's useless too. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So we you can't it. get any more shadow banned than you already are. So <laughs> that's how I feel. It's like, whatever, you know? And I mean, that's what I love about people that talk about uh, par um, parallel societies. Um, there's another guy called Lions, Not Sheep. 
um, who has right. this whole company. And it's basically all about embracing our individualist thinking like, okay, so this regime is going to uh, try to lock us down, control us, tell, it, tell us to take a shot, you know, say when we can or cannot work. No, sorry, I don't accept any of that. And I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And so that's when Fear Frequency was born. And we shot the whole thing in July and edited it. And then once we had the final edit, um, we got a distributor within a week. Wow. Congratulations. It's kind of amazing yeah. to get a, a distributor that quick, Juno Films. And um, uh, yeah. And so we're on, right now, we're on pay per view, we're on YouTube. Google Play and Amazon. Um, and so right now it's pay-per-view. We'll go into streaming later. It kind of, you know, it rolls out in kind of increments. And um, that's where we are. And, and oh, and before that, we put it through a whole bunch of festivals. Um, we've received five awards and a few honorable mentions. I got two Best Actress Awards, which is like, okay, that's great. You know what? If I do nothing else in my acting career ever again, I have two Best Actress Awards from my peers, so I'm good. It's nice. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and also, I'm just happy for you because it's, like you said, people may not be familiar, but you have really, you've been through the ringer in terms of um, that attack. same attack, the thing that happens in every community, whether it's the knitting community, which I've covered before, or it's Hollywood, <laughs> if you speak out against woke, like they will yeah. come for you and when try and Bill ostracize Maher you. you. When Bill Maher disses you on your show, you know that you've been attacked. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so for you to just keep going and do your own thing. And I do want to talk about, you brought up parallel economies, parallel mm -hmm. societies. Yeah. Do you think that's where we're heading? Because I know a lot of people who've been talking about this in the past year. Absolutely, totally, completely, utterly. And I have spoken about it. I spoke about it as soon as the regime took over. Um, and I've been speaking about it periodically since. It's just, and that's a lot of my Facebook um, posts are about that, just trying to get people to think, look, this is what else is going on out there. You know, you don't have to believe what I post or not, but at least think about it. Mm -hmm. At least question things. Don't question what the, I mean, don't not question the rules because the rules might not actually even be legal. I mean, I question everything these days. I question all of the medical community. I question the CDC, the AMA, the NIH. I question Fauci. I question this entire government, including most GOP. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that we just need to, we need to have the attitude of uh, being creative, intense, industrious thinkers. And we need to be able to be big picture thinkers. Let's look at all the little things that they're putting together and, and what they're trying to do with these things and see what their aim is. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, you know, with everything in life, anybody I meet and I, when I meet them, I think, hmm, so you're nice to me. Why do you want to know me? What's in it for you? You know, whatever happens in the world, what's in it for the other guy? Always think about that because it causes you to, think differently and make different decisions about things. Does that make sense? It does because I tend to be pretty, um, I like to go into new, when I meet new people, assuming good faith and sincerity, and I don't want to completely change. However, I need to be more discerning <laughs> and not so, Yeah. Uh, I don't know, sometimes, uh, uh, missing red flags. I'm getting better at spotting them, but you know, right. sometimes it's kind of, yeah. Like what? you were, you were in the business though, weren't you? You were, you were in the acting oh. biz or yeah. No, I, well, I managed comedians. So I, I was on the business side. I was a manager and then uh, produced a, a couple of like comedy, stand up comedy okay. specials and one late night show. Well, um, I'm sure you still saw it then. Oh, I did. There's, you know, it's just, there's so much duplicity um, in the business of entertainment because 
you have so many people scrambling to, you know, be somebody or be wealthy or be powerful, or, you know, you have these young, beautiful things wanting to be a star. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much power play in that. And there's so much kind of uh, like navigating through all of that. Hunger. And so, yeah. And so, and you, so I, especially for the young, um, I would say you must actually have a more discerning nature when you meet people. You must, because yeah. it, it really can save you at the end of the day. It's so easy to get to go down that road and think, oh, you know, I'll just dip my toes in this little pool with all these sharks. Yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, three years later, you're hooked on Vicodin and you're trying to, you're trying to navigate your life and you know that everybody around you is completely fake, but you pretend to because you want to prop up your, your fame. You know, why do you think it is? I don't know if I ever asked you this before, uh, but it's something I like to ask a lot of people nowadays just to figure out what it is that helps people see through um, lies and deceit, like evil. What, what is it about you that how, you said you've always been kind of an outsider in some ways? Is there something about your your background or your character or your family, family history or something that led you to be more yeah. eyes wide open? <laughs> I was bullied. I was bullied. Yep. I was bullied in um, in grammar school and then later again in high school. Yeah, that's why. That's so why. you can see that side of human nature. Well, you know, I see, I mean, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. I did. I wasn't an outs outsider first because I wanted to be. I was an outsider because I was ostracized, right? Mm -hmm. But then as you get older, you start getting a little bit like, well, I'll show you, you know. And if it wasn't for me being ostracized by, you know, the top clique in, um, in school, then I probably wouldn't have had the impetus to go into entertainment, which is a little bit scary because you think there's probably a hell of a lot of people in entertainment that have kind of messed up childhoods that actually have something to prove, mm -hmm. which makes them a little bit more desperate to prove it, right? Yeah. It's also why I'm able to play a victim quite easily because I often felt victimized. And it's also why the left embraces victimhood so mm. much so that it's like you're congratulated for being a victim so you can sit in your little comfy victimhood hell and that's where you are on the left right you so you remind me of clara bow she oh. was always an outsider even when she was the it girl and all of her magazines you know is this hollywood starlet in the hollywood community they people would like some of the other the, they'd be like don't invite her she was too honest like a lot of them lied about their their backgrounds and tried to present this fantasy world this elite world they had come from yeah. and she came from nothing in in i think brooklyn and she was just open about it you yeah. know her dad's alcoholism and all of it and um, just too honest. Yeah, that, 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 that is me. I mean, what I can't stand <laughs> is people with that are full of pretense. I just, I can't stand it. I can, I can play along with them, you know, like the best of them, but I really hate it. And I think I do put some people off in that respect because I'm just so, this is me, this is the way I am and I'm not hiding it. And I don't care what you think. Yeah, that's it. I yeah. just, I've gotten to the point where I really, I don't care. You, know? you speak the truth. Well, you mentioned Facebook. If anyone wants to follow you, I'll, I'll plug this again at the end, but that's your platform right now that you're mostly on. It is. And I wish it wasn't, but it is because yeah. it's where I have the most people. And um, I have all these weird tactics to post things as well, because you do. <laughs> it's like I cannot, I cannot post a direct post about anything political, religious, anything at all that is at all controversial because they will shadow ban me like you wouldn't believe. So what I usually do is I either find a pretty picture or if it's something really important, I'll find an old sexy picture of me. <laughs> you have a great tactic. <laughs> and I post that. I'm like, look, 
below, you know, or I'll, instead of even saying the word below, I'll put a little B and then an L O, <laughs> you know, anything to kind of get them away from shadow banning me. So, and I put it in the first comment. Yeah. One of these days, I want to have you back. He's he's ta uh, taking a little time away right now, but one of the guests I've been having pretty regularly on my new channel is Cameron Pasha, who's a screenwriter. I think you guys would just have a lot of fun talking to each other. And he ha also has appreciation for beautiful ladies, and he's a wrong thinker. And so I think I think he would he needs to be following you if he's not already. Because okay. yeah, you guys, you have to follow on Facebook because you'll get beautiful photos of Julianne, and then below you'll get all this like wrong thing that you're you're like, <laughs> like yeah. I'll put it right below in the comments guys <laughs> oh man yeah well i mean i'm just all about the um i'm all about free thinking and individualism and this parallel universe that we need to be building um i'm all about that i d i don't see uh, you know and i just want to say one thing about the yeah about the elections yeah so everybody's all i i see so many people, Republicans and conservatives um, and libertarians, all excited about the midterms. Oh, the midterms, you know, we're going to have a, a red tsunami at the midterms. And I'm sitting there thinking, but Dominion is still in control. Mm -hmm. Dominion is still our voting system. And Dominion is crooked as hell. I mean, Dominion's evil, as far as I'm concerned. So the problem with that is that, sure, I absolutely say everybody go and vote. Everyone go and vote because that's what a true democracy is. We are, we are allowed to vote for our representatives. However, mm -hmm. because Dominion is still um, our voting system and because a lot of the avenues of fraud are still fully in place, especially in the blue states, especially in the most populated states, I have very little faith that we are going to win. I mean, here's what they'll probably do. They'll give us a little bit here and there, you know. They they give us a few wins here and there, but I I honestly I and I could be wrong, but there. I just I don't see us winning and I don't see that that is a way to win because all it's it's not just our elected people that we need to worry about. It's all of DC, it's all the alphabet agencies. It's, it's the deep all, state. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and there's, we're talking, they have been building this for decades and deck. Well, actually a century. They've been building this for a century. And Can it's, we yeah. I'm going to interject just for a second for anyone new who may be listening, especially if you're on the left and you hear a word like dip, deep state and you've been conditioned to say, oh, crazy conspiracy. Let me just tell you what that means. It's nothing crazy. Deep state means these unelected bureaucrats, all these three letter agencies, these people who stick around regardless of who, when the administration changes, they're still there. Um, the ones who work in the background. And you know what? It was the left. It was us. I remember. I've, I've been around for a long time. I was in the left for a long time. It was the left that was first criticizing the deep state. And, you know, people like Dennis Kucinich, Mother Jones Magazine, like it was on the left talking about it. Now that Trump started doing it, then a lot of leftists have forgotten that or they think it's like some right wing thing. It's not. It's simply these bureaucrats who stick around forever. You know what? The CDC which is a, an unelected body <laughs> deciding that your property rights aren't valid and you can't evict people if they don't pay rent, uh, you know, issuing an eviction moratorium. That's, that's messed up. That's the deep state. In it's action, not legal. In my opinion. It's not it's, legal. It's, it's not legal. Yeah. They can't yeah. make laws. They don't make laws. They're not supposed to, or rather they're not supposed to make laws. However, for all of those people that say, Oh, but that's not legal and we should sue them. Sure. If you have the money to, to sue these bodies and try and um, do it through the courts, good luck to you. But um, I guess my way is a little bit more radical. <laughs> Your way is, well, so so there's a few things on YouTube that are huge no-nos and will get yanked. And one is talking about the big show. That's what I call it. Um, that's the election process. Uh, All right. Just to say, so the big show, I don't trust the big show and right. I'm still going to go to the show. And, but, I, okay. but, I, but okay. yeah, I'm still going to vote. I just, I'm with you. I don't, I just don't, 
I don't put a lot of faith in, especially national politics anymore. I am very concerned about who's in my local city council, school yeah. board, sheriff. Yeah. Those yeah. things have a direct impact on the lives of the people in my community, especially the kids in my community. And so I am, you know, I'm, I'm very invested in those. Um, but beyond that, I think what you're talking about and what I've heard a lot of people talking about this, uh, this parallel economy, I think things seem to be heading there. Can I show you this one news piece? Sure. Also, and and see. also, let me just say one thing that, that I find really interesting is what the Supreme Court did with Roe v. Wade. Um, you know, obviously all the blue states are horrified by it. And the red states are thrilled that some of their states have said, okay, you know, we're going to, um, you know, have the abortion laws that, that our people have elected us to choose, which is, you know, we are anti-abortion. Um, without going into details about that, what I will say, the beauty of it going back to the states, which is constitutional, will in time, and maybe faster than we think, considering the general, uh, the general um, polarization of the, of the sides right now, um, will cause a migration to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Roe v. Wade, it's also gun laws. So those two things are gonna cause a migration. Because if you look at the early Civil War, um, it was over territory, North and South, right? And so mm -hmm. that's why it was doable as a hot war, because mm -hmm. it was territories. Yeah. But now, you know, I mean, I have a raging Marxist that lives three doors up. Right. You're in the same territory. Right. And I am in a deep blue. I'm deep, deep, deep blue state right now. You know, am I going to stay in a deep blue state? No, there will be a point where um, where I will not be able to stay here. Absolutely. And, I'm, and I would say probably um, the same goes for, you know, conservatives in New York. They're probably going, I'm getting the hell out. Oh, I have yeah. so many friends who've been moving out, yeah. and I, and California. Yep, yeah. and I, I, um, I hereby submit, Julianne. I have a campaign I've been doing of anything awful that I see the left say about Texas. I screenshot it and I make a meme out of it and say, "This is Texas. Don't move here." I just, I'm rolling with their yeah. um, character. Anything sure. they say bad, I'm like, good, because. Yeah. I, I, what you're saying is, I think you're right. I think that people are going to start gravitating more towards the places with their values. And mm -hmm. so um, I, those kind of funny memes, it's like, if the, yeah. if, if leftists take them seriously and run with it, great, then maybe they won't move here. And the right kind of people will be migrating here. I hope and that is the that. point. That is the point because, uh, you know, we can be outraged over abortion for instance, we can be outraged. We can say, you know, you are killing a, a life that God intended to live. Um, and there's all kinds of ins and outs with that. I don't want to go down the road of the particulars of abortion. However, my attitude is, and some people might not agree with me, but if the left want to kill their babies, let them, let them do it. Let them go to the state where they want to have all of their leftist policies they want to have their children indoctrinated. I know it's terrible. I know it's heinous. I know it's mm -hmm. awful. But let them. Because they have free will. They're choosing mm -hmm. it. Who are we? we? We are only making a point to say, this is not right for us, for your children. This is not right for society. Um, the whole, um, the, the whole oh, my, this should not happen. What happened? <laughs> Sorry. My, did my phone, did you hear my phone ringing? No, I did not. Oh, that's so Don't weird. worry. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, but we're saying this isn't right for us or right, in this, this territory. Right. right. And it's right for you then go and do it. And now I don't know with, we'll see what happens in time. I mean, will the left think, no, this is not good. You have to follow our way and the whole world has to follow our way and the whole world must be, you know, that's what they I mean, want. Let's call it what it is: totalitarian communism. Yeah, that's what we're they not want. Even, we're not calling it. They're only you. Oh, and the other thing I'll say: they're using fascism right now to to get where they want to go. But their end game is totalitarian communism. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah. They just, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I told you this right before we started, but anybody watching, they just perma banned James Lindsay from Twitter. James Lindsay, who's um, one of the biggest voices, especially in, from, coming from the academic world against woke and has done so much good in, in terms of educating people about this ideology, about this totalitarianism you're talking about. And um, they just, they just cut off his microphone at Twitter today. So we're going to see where he ends up. Yeah. Um, but, 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 I mean, know. maybe he'll go to truth. Maybe there will be a, or gab or, or maybe there will be another, another one popping up, you know, mm -hmm. that, that would be great. I, I just think when I finally left Twitter for the last time, <laughs> cause I, it's like, so I, you removed yourself. You were yes. like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you think when you go onto Twitter and you see that my, you know, that my uh, page is no longer up there. I left. They didn't tell me to leave. No. Yeah. Although they have banned me a few times and they said, oh, um, if you take back this statement and um, and then, you know, we'll let you back on. So I did. Now, I know some people are really principled about that. Like, no, I, you know, I stand by that statement. I'm going to stick by that statement. I'm thinking, OK, so what? You think that I you think that I did the wrong thing with that statement. So I'm going to go right back on. I'm going to say the same exact thing but I'm just going to word it a little bit differently and I'm going to use a little bit of code, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I use all the, you know, like on your keyboard, I use the exclamation point, say for an I, or I'll use a dollar sign for an S or I'll use a three for an E. And so you can, you know, you can say what you want to say and I'm going to say it, it's, you know, it's weird. It's like the 1920s, the 2020s in a lot of ways, because we're having to come up with all this coded language, like, you know, the, like they had in the twenties and they had a whole lexicon that they used about, about the, uh, the heat, you know, and yep. the, the blues. And, yep. and that's why I feel like when I talk about like the big show and also when I talk about open. the Jabberwocky. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit just a couple of these before we move on. Oh, just some people in the chat giving you love. Nerdy girl says, Aww. I love Julianne's glasses. So do Thank I. Thank you. Stylish. I and, got these uh, at a Fairfax swap meet back in like 1996, <laughs> and I've been I've just had the the, um, you know, the prescription changed out every time. I just love them so much. They're, so thank you for liking them. They're classic. Thank you for the super chat, Ken Lipson, who's an artist, is here today. Ken says I love Julianne and Carrie knows how I feel. Thank Aww. you, sir. And thank um, you. And That's then really nice. Brentley is here from Dangerous Red. I bet you would really dig those guys. They're all into philosophy. They have a great channel. Um, hi, Brent. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, speaking of channels, Rib, one last one, Rib says that you need to do a channel, Julian. I hate technology. I hate <laughs> the technology. That's the thing that just does me in. <laughs> I know that's why I'm always happy to have somebody else do the technology. So, you know, if somebody wants to come to me and say, let's do a channel together on game, you know, I just don't, don't ask me to do the technology. It don't just pisses ask you me to off. run it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to put this on the screen. So I told you about this along the lines of parallel economy. This is one of the big success stories this month. Uh, Eric July, also known as Ripa just launched after years in the making. I, I heard 15 years he was planning this. Launched his own comic book um, outlet, I guess you'd say, distributor. He's he's doing Ripperverse now. He's decided the comic book industry is too woke. I'm going to do my own thing in, in this art form that I love. And um, he broke all expectations. He He's made over $3 million. Um, he is in a fight with PayPal right now because he did use PayPal for some of it and they're trying to hold his money the okay. same way they, yeah. So I, I have to interrupt. Yeah. Why are you using PayPal? And I mean, because I think there are other alternate um, companies that you can use. Same thing with GoFundMe. Why use these companies that are woke that we know they're going to shut people down. Why even bother? Let's let's find our own companies. Screw all of these people. Seriously, yeah. it's like let's just like you know get out of my way. Let's just you know make our own version of PayPal, our own version of GoFundMe, our own uh, film and TV distributor like Netflix, 
our own Amazon, our own medical industry. I'm serious. I mean, I'm so talking you, like from top to bottom. Everything. So, so this is what you want to talk about. And I, I, I completely agree with you. David Boys talked about this a lot too, is we need everything, a parallel anti-woke, anti-totalitarian version of everything. So Rip has created a comic book outlet Somebody needs to create something that rivals PayPal. Like somebody needs to create payment processors. It's it's everything from bakers, you know, florists, um, to production studios. Yep. And I knew you would like this story. That's why I wanted to put yep. this one up because he's successful. I mean, he's showing that Fantastic. if you build it, if you I build mean, it, that people want it. Yep. Yep. I mean, bravo to this guy. Bravo. Yeah. And that's that is a true individualist. So bravo to him. More people need to do that. I mean, look, I'm not a dummy, but I'm crap at business and I'm crap at tech. And that's why I'm not doing it myself. Um, I'm full of ideas. I've got ideas up the wazoo. If somebody wants to hit me up, that's some sort of technical wonder. I can certainly just give you loads of ideas. If you want to pay me later, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay too, because the end game is that we create uh, a good, moral, ethical, good, Christian foundational society. Now, I know some people are going to freak out about that. Well, like, you know, I'm an, I'm an agnostic or I'm an atheist or, you know, I'm a Buddhist or whatever. But if you look at our history, the history of the West, the West was built um, with those Christian foundations. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, it's not, it wasn't, it, it doesn't mean you have to be a Christian listener. Right. Exactly. I mean, I have atheist friends that are down with this, that they believe that there is value in Christian ethics and morals, and they see the value in it historically, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to build again. We absolutely need that. Um, because the West, people, people look at the West and think, oh, you know, the reason why the West or the reason why America did well is because we're capitalist or because we're individualist, which is, you know, both of those things are true, but they always had that under the underpinning of the foundations of Christian morals and ethics. And without that under, underpinning, you wouldn't have had what we have. You would not have had it because you look at what's happened to the West since we've been over century, over centuries, over decades, well, maybe centuries, um, turning our back on God and mm -hmm. on the idea of, um, you know, Jesus and God. And what we have now is a lot of people who are still very much pro-capitalist, but they're crony capitalists. In fact, I will say to you, show me a communist elite, scratch him, and you're going to get a crony capitalist mm. every single time. So what does that tell you? Yeah. Right? Now, are you, are you Christian, Julia? I know we talked about I this am. a long time ago. Who I am. You? And I, you know, I became a born again Christian when I was very young and um, I did leave the church I was with a fundamentalist church and um, I had a, uh, an incident at the church that really put me off. Um, it was kind of groupthink. It was a bit scary, churchy groupthink that I just thought, okay, this is not, you know, uh, this kind of blinkered way of thinking like, oh, if you don't think like this, you know, the devil is working in your heart. And, and I just thought, okay, I can't, I can't deal with that. Um, however, um, I, I still don't go to church. I probably should, haven't found one that has excited me enough to want to go. Mm -hmm. I would like to. Um, but when it comes to Christianity, I will never denounce God. I will never denounce Jesus. And, um, and I fully believe that um, we will find redemption through that because he's the only one that offers it. Surly so regardless says, of how far-fetched it might seem, because look, I have trouble with the Bible. I do. I'm not going to lie. I read certain things in the Bible and think, this is crazy. But, <laughs> you know, but I'm a big picture person. I'm yeah. a big picture person. I look at history. I look at what Jesus said, the way he lived, what he did. The way he lived. That's it. And, and I think there's no one else that came and claimed that, 
quite to the same degree. There's no one else. There's a lot of weird mystical things about Christianity, like, you know, rising up after three days and what's going on with the Shroud of Turin and uh, witness accounts and all kinds of things. And so, you know, I'm not a historian. I'm not an anthropologist. But you know what? My default position is, yep, he's for real. And yep, I'm going to follow it. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I, I don't even need to know the details. And I know that sounds crazy. I know some Christians might disagree with me, but I believe in following what is good. The truth. Mm-hmm. God is what the is truth. What is true. Yes. Uh, yes. Sarla Unicorn says, I'm not a Christian, but I'd prefer you guys and gals as neighbors over other people. I'm hearing Thank a you. lot of this lately. I was just on a stream on um, Unwokable's channel. We were talking about James Lindsay's banning. Paul Rossi was there. And we were talking about this whole phenomenon about um, it's sort of like I'm meeting a lot more people now who are atheists who say, well, I'm an atheist, but I believe in Christian foundational principles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just like Surly Unicorn saying, maybe they're in some ways practicing Christians, but they don't believe. Right. Right. I but have they're... one. I have one atheist friend that is, you know, truly very bright, staunch Nietzsche follower you know, a true atheist. However, he truly wants to um, believe if that makes sense. And so, I mean, just that want, I I said, you know, and I say to him, I say, you know what, because you want to, that's fantastic. In fact, in that respect, just that. There's a verse. My pastor, so my pastor did a great sermon on this once, um, church on the square in Georgetown. If you want to look up their channel, he did a sermon about how he he got to that place. He got to that place of where he didn't believe, but he wanted to. And he started doing a prayer. It's a verse in the Bible where this father um, sees Jesus heal his son and he falls on his knees and he says, I believe, help my unbelief, which that's gives good. me chills. But that's yeah. what he's like, I believe, but I still struggle with unbelief. Like, yeah, help my unbelief. And so he started doing that prayer all of the time. Yeah. I mean, Um, and we, you know, I've had intense conversations with atheists, as you well know, one of them is well documented. Yeah. yeah, I won't mention the name, but anyway, (laughs) I've I've had intense conversations and um, you know, as I say, I struggle with it, but I'm going to believe it anyway. That's it. I'm going to believe it anyway. Yeah. That's what faith is. That's it. Honey. Yeah. yeah. So, um, this parallel economy. Well, one yes. last one. Oh, thank you for the super chat. 1776 super chat. What a great amount. <laughs> Says um, <clears throat> Julian's comment on the elite, the fat communist being a crony capitalist is entirely correct. Dear leaders live lavishly off of mafasi. I can't say that mafioso. word. Yeah. Mafioso style arrangements. See yep. Hillary and Bill. Oh yeah. Mafioso. Um, Hillary and Bill, we can talk about a hell of a lot of other people, but they're actually running the government right now. Starts with an O and ends in an A. <sighs> I'll look that up later. <laughs> um, so you sent me a couple of articles. Do you want me to pull up some of these? Yeah. So one thing was really interesting, um, again, has to do with this parallel society Um it's, it's like there's a whole bunch of different puzzle pieces that are beginning to fit together, you know, not just in business, not just in medicine, um, you know, in, in every aspect, in art, everything. Um, and this, this article you're going to pull up, a friend mm-hmm. of mine on Facebook sent it to me and I was absolutely floored by it. And I've, I've been reading about it and it has to do with becoming what they call a state citizen. I'm just going to just kind of give you a, a little overview and then invite, you can invite you can, all your you're, people to. You're new to this information as totally well. Like you, new. You just so, read this. Right. I, I just read it, but you know, we're on, it's here, we're today. So I feel like I need to share it. So the interesting thing about this, this article is he says that back in 1871, Um, Now, don't quote me, you'll have to read the article, but basically Mm -hmm. it says something about how um, the United States of America did this thing where they were kind of um, incorporated. So not the United States of America, the United States is incorporated. It's sort of like 
the United States LLC, for instance, mm -hmm. right? And so what it means is that we, by saying we are a citizen of the United States by, you know, having our birth certificate, check, checking that box, citizen of the United States, um, you know, our driver's license, um, our, our, our wedding license, whatever, you know, anything that says citizen of the United States, we have basically in, agreed to be enslaved and that we are slaves to this United States incorporation. A corporation of that is sorry that is the corporation that is the United States. Now, this guy is talking about that constitutionally, we are free people. Free mm. the Constitution claims that we are free people, and those people. Um, my phone went again. That's so weird. So and we those, can't hear it. Right. It's so weird. And those people. Um, are not they you can denounce being a citizen of the United States you are a state citizen or a non non citizen national of America or of United States of America okay. not United States the corporation does, does that make sense? I mean, kind of, is this, is this it, sort of a, it is, psych com it is complicated, Carrie. It's complicated. Is this, is this sort of like, what is this, uh, what bearing does it have for him to say, I'm now a non-citizen? Like legally, what does that mean? Or is it more of a mental thing that he's doing kind of no, separating? It's legally, it's an opting out of a lot of things. And I, and I don't know all the ins and outs. I mm -hmm. mean, there are some people that say, you no longer are beholden to taxes, for instance. You are no longer beholden to property tax and things like that. And then he talks about things called um, having a land patent rather than a deed. Most people have a deed or a trust deed. Um, and so he's talking about having a land patent, which means you absolutely own the land, can do anything with that land. So it's just, it's a different way of thinking. And I invite your viewers to just start going down this rabbit hole and see what you might find, because I'm certainly looking into it. But I'm, I'm going to leave the link in the chat. This is an okay. article called Leaving the Psychopaths. Can I just read the first couple paragraphs real fast? Yeah. yeah. So he's talking about the parallel economy. He says, this week something incredible happened. Call it the hundredth monkey effect or whatever you want. But many of us in the freedom community have been saying the only way out is a parallel society. There is no fixing the old paradigm. We have to create a new one, new health care, new education, and a new court system. Now comes word that professional golfers just started creating their own parallel society. Former golf professional Greg Norman formed a new golf tour called LIV to rival the existing PGA tour. It is backed by Saudi Arabian investors, paying double what the PGA pays to its winners. The new LIV tour rose out of what golfer Phil Mickelson called the, quote, obnoxious greed of the PGA tour and a need for players to be more than just property or slaves in a fascist regime. And after this weekend's first ever LIV golf tournament, it's clear that the parallel tour is gaining momentum with mass defections from the PGA. Um, rather than wasting their time on fighting the PGA, players just said, let's do something better. So that's an example I hadn't even heard yep. of in the golf, yep. golfing world. Yep. Yep. It's happening everywhere. Now, look, I'm not going to lie. When, if more and more people start going down this road, we are going to have pushback because they want control of everyone and everything. I mean, the elites want control, ultimate control of everything. And we have to resist it. And I mean, I'm talking resist it to our dying breath. Hmm. Um, I, I really am. I mean, I'm, it's, it's so important for, for life and for real freedom and for future generations. And, you know, I don't have any children. I'm, I'm actually a victim of a lot of the indoctrination because I was a feminist for years and I chose Same. not to have children and now it's too late. Um, but this is all part of, of waking up out of this control that they have over us. There's so many ways that they've indoctrinated us. 
Um, and it's just a matter of, okay, we're gonna form this parallel society. We're gonna have this new beautiful um, foundation. Well, it's not new, but you know, mm -hmm. our, our Christian ethic and ethics and morals foundation to build things from. And we're gonna build something wonderful again. And we're gonna leave these people aside. And if it comes to, you know, the big hot WAR, well, so be it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that there's a point where you need to fight for something that's good. One of the things that they're pushing lately, their new product, if you will, because they always have these new products of things that they're attacking, right? And we've seen them attack a lot of the social justice ideology, the woke ideology that that all of the elite have embraced, the corporations, the entertainment world, the media, you know, all of it, the political parties. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is the social justice stuff is based around um, demonizing um, groups of people based on their race or sex. So it's like men are oppressors, you know, white people are oppressed. It's all about identifying the oppressors and but now one of the new products they've been rolling out, I've seen is this Christian, they're attacking what they're calling Christian nationalism. This yes. is everywhere right now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Andrew, Andrew Torba talks about this too. He's really fired up. I, I, I have to admit he's a, he's a good man. Andrew Torba. Yeah. Torba who runs Gab. They've yes. been coming hard after him. Yep. Um, you sent me another piece that's sort of about this. Can I read yeah. from some of this one? Maybe we yeah. can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So this is a piece on Gab for anyone who's just listening. It's um, uh, Gab News, pioneering the parallel economy for the glory of God. Gab is an explicitly Christian platform. Um, which, it seems that way, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is kind of incredible. That's such a no-no. I can't believe they could, you know, in this in this culture, in this day and age, we're yeah. so anti to be like, hey, we have a Christian platform. Um so this is an editorial called Unbelief is Destructive. That's why pagan nationalism is so dangerous. And it's talking about this Christian nationalism meme that they've been putting out, this attack, right, on what they're calling Christian nationalism. So it says, the hullabaloo about the bugaboo of Christian nationalism is a diversion from what its opponents are, necessity, are of necessity promoting, namely pagan nationalism. Noah Webster defined pagan as, quote, pertaining to the worship of false gods. A pagan worldview, therefore, is one based on a god or authority other than the one true god revealed in the Old and New Testaments. Pagan nationalism, then, is the belief that America should be defined by a pagan or non-Christian worldview and that the government should take active steps to keep it that way. Pagan nationalism seeks to merge pagan and American identities, enthroning a non-Christian worldview as the standard by which all things are judged. For example, pagan nationalists want their worldview regarding death to reign supreme. Any woman who wants to murder her child in the womb ought to be able to. Pagan nationalists also want their worldview regarding sexuality to be the law of the land. Homosexual marriage, drag shows for kids, and transgender surgeries, read mutilation, are part and parcel with pagan nationalism. It is worthwhile to note that abortion, infanticide, and sexual perversion are not new. They have been the offspring of paganism for millennia. But now we have pagan nationalists in America promoting these things as the basis of our society. I think what he's doing here is kind of interesting. He's sort of flipping their own. He's taking the attack and he's flipping it on them. Like they're saying, they're tr trying to say, we see Christian nationalism everywhere. And he's like, hold on a second. You guys are kind of, you're psychopaths. You engage in projection and Darvo, you know, where you're denying a reverse victim order. You accuse people of the things that you're doing. So let's shine the light on you. Is it not that you're promoting pagan nationalism? I think that's what he's trying to do with that piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I just find it really interesting that they hide behind things that seem good and seem Christian, like mm -hmm. the whole equity, inclusion, and diversity. Oh, but Jesus, Jesus loved, um, you know, hookers. <laughs> yeah, right? you know, he did. Right. You know, Jesus loved people who stole and, you know, right. And so they use that and they use things like um, Jesus loved all those people. Right. Jesus loved everyone. But right. but he called he called them from their lifestyle to live a better way. 
Right. He didn't go in there and say, I love you. Just stay, keep doing this. Yeah. No, that, exactly. that they missed an important part. It's right. like Jesus was hanging out with um, thieves and prostitutes. And yes, of course. Yeah. Um, I hang out with thieves and prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, <laughs> <We're> all- <laughs> but I don't go and say, I think this is okay. What you're doing to yourself and your life. Right. But that's right, where like, the, but that's where yeah. the little clever twist is, you know, on the left. Yeah. And then also the whole be kind thing. It's like, Oh, be kind. Okay. So be kind to, um, you know, the confused child that's been indoctrinated that the teacher tells them that they're probably not the sex that they are. And they start, um, you know, sending them down that road in order to have them go and get surgery to destroy their um, reproductive organs, which, by the way, is just one of the many roots this um, world, um, e- these world elites are trying to get people to stop having babies. Oh, I was going to say, you mentioned being um, someone who bought into the the feminist sort of, you know, you can always have kids later, don't have kids now, career, career. I bought into some of the same stuff. And now they've moved beyond that. It's not just like with I, through ideology and female empowerment trying yeah. to, I think, get us um, to, to choose not to have families. But now they're actually sterilizing kids. Mm-hmm. They're going further. I mm-hmm. mean, these surgeries, the, mm-hmm. the, the hormones and stuff, they have... We have no idea what this is going to do to people, but we do know that it can cause sterilization. Oh, no, not can, not can, does, does, does. Hi, I just wanted to say hi, K. Dove Truce here, Chris Williams. He's another podcaster you would love, Julianne. Um, He's a musician and artist and a Christian and you, yeah, you should should talk to him sometime. Don't get me started talking about music. Oh man, you think I talk a lot now. (laughs) So, so, so yeah, so what I was saying is, so in regards to um, feminism and, you know, as I say, I mean, I love the fact that, you know, I can speak out and, and um, I, you know, I have the ability to vote and all that stuff. However, did you know that if women were not allowed to vote, people on the left would not get into office? Okay, now we're treading in dangerous territory. It is dangerous. I, I know, I realize, some... and look, I didn't like hearing that either, but that's true. It's true. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I want my vote taken away, okay? I'm just saying, I'm just stating a fact. This is, just, I'm just stating it. I right? agree. But what's very interesting about these, about women and feminism is that we've been taken down this road. And there's a lot of feminists that are not going to agree with me, Okay. And they're going to say, yes, but, you know, I didn't want to stay home and I didn't want to have kids and I didn't want to um, have a husband. You know, I wanted to have my own life and my career and stuff like that. Now, I'm older now. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like that for years. I was like, ah, kids, you know, career, mm-hmm. career, career. It's like if, as soon as if I ever thought about having a kid then some other really exciting, interesting career prospect would happen either with music or with film or with modeling or whatever, all the different things that I did, which I never told, I never said in the intro thing, Mm because I've done all these different, all these different artistic pursuits. Yeah. And so the idea of kids just always went flying out the window. And now I'm older and I think, damn, I really wish I had had three kids, four kids. You know, because I think that there's a, a there's a, a side of our femaleness, something that is deeply embedded in our DNA mm-hmm. that causes us to want to be um, uh, nurturing. Yes. Right. And that's why we are the ones to have the babies, because we have an aspect to ourselves that is nurturing. Now, when you take a feminist who is a feminist who is completely focused on career um, possibly hates men because had a few bad experiences with some asshole guys, right? Mm-hmm. Had a few abortions, maybe whatever, you know, totally focused on career. But what happens is they're, they still have these deep seated kind of, I'm going to, for lack of a better phrase, mama bear instinct, mm-hmm. right? The mama bear instinct are the ones that say, Oh, victim. Let me help you, victim. Let me help all of those people that are victim, victimized or vic- victims in the world, right? That's their mama bear instinct going, let me help you. 
you know, instead of, for instance, what, I mean, and I think I've touched on this with you before, the idea of real help, mm -hmm. which is showing people that feel victimized or are victimized the way out of it that they do it themselves. Yes. And I know that sounds, you know, of course there's some, um, you know, there's some details in there that sometimes people might need an initial, um, initial leg up or some initial help if they're in, you know, a, a abusive home or whatever, you know, they need to go somewhere where they can get away from the abuse, etc. right? But the thing about humanity is that we need to be able to, we need to be able to strive. We, be, we need to be able to achieve and we need to be able to help ourselves and to stop the victim mentality. And all the left does and what feminists tend to do is they coddle that. They coddle the victim. They infantilize people. They turn them into these. Yeah, there is a lot of this. I, I, I agree. I've seen it happen where uh, I think Camille Paglia has talked about this and somebody dropped a great quote of hers in the chat. Um, by the way, Dion, who's always got great quotes, says every year feminists provide more and more evidence for the old charge that women can neither think nor write. That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, no, that pisses me off because I can <laughs> think and I can write. Um, right. However, but I do believe that women have um, a beautiful and wonderful place in the world. And that's not necessarily in these kinds of positions of power. I, it gets, know, it gets it. twisted. Like it gets that motherly instinct you're talking about when it goes wrong, when yeah. they, when it's placed on like, let me mother and, uh, these oppressed groups and speak on behalf of, you know, and right. speak for yeah. and keep them in this dependent place, right. you know, as, right. as victims in an oppressed class. Right. That's a perverted kind of motherly instinct. It's it is. But, and twisted. why? And why? Because they, they, never had their own outlet because they were told that they were better than that to, mm -hmm. you know, be pregnant or barefoot and pregnant, slaving in front of the stove in front of your husband and feeding your kids, you know? So mm -hmm. all the things that came out of that, think about it. Think about all the things that came out of feminism when it started. First you have feminism, then you had the pill, then you had rampant sexuality, you had abortion, all of these things are not supportive of true femininity, okay? Our true nature of being feminine. Yeah. And they're also supportive of um, tearing apart families, um, not having babies, um, strife between the sexes. And, and also, you know, even with the way, you know, how some men can be real cads, right? You know, they for lack of a better word, they, they, they kind of put it about, right. You know, they go with whoever and they, you know, oh, okay. now, right. So, <laughs> it's, but in the old days, okay, before they had the pill and before the, the, the women's liberation movement, they had a sense of shame so that if they ended up having unprotected sex and the woman got pregnant, they felt a sense of shame and responsibility. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that these families or, you know, these men that ended up through shame and responsibility married these women and, you know, made a family when maybe they might not have been compatible as a family. But what I am saying is that there is something to the idea of um, uh, of responsibility, personal responsibility, a sense of shame, self-respect, respect for the other person. And so when when feminist when feminism and the kind of sexual revolution happened, the women were like, oh, okay, I can, you know, do it with whoever I want, whenever I want. And the men are going, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so they didn't feel any sense of shame or responsibility. So it's been bad for, for both. both sides. For both. You know? Did you see that meme? That was it wasn't a meme. It was an actual post. It was a this happened after the Roe v. Wade decision, Julian. It was a, a, a um it was in I think it might have been on Twitter. And it was these women talking about we need to go on sexual strike until Roe v. Wade is reinstated. And they were saying, you know, 
no more, no more casual sex with men. We make them sign a contract that they're going to stay there and be responsible for any baby that we comes of our, our sex. And it was like, and, and then somebody oh, screenshot and said, okay, you've just discovered traditional marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, how beautiful. Wow. Like, this feminism, like, and they should have to sign a contract that says they'll stick around and be responsible if we get pregnant. How about that? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, however your, your brain gets there, I'm, I'm good with that. It's like, wow, they got there. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, all of that also it leads to, you know, getting back to the whole not having children thing, focusing on career. Um, it also leads to depopulation. And mm. if you look at the various avenues of depopulation that um, the elites and the media that are their apparatchiks um, that are orchestrating, is that it's, you know, it's feminism, you know, women have a career, you're better than just staying at home with kids. That's not worthy. A career is more worthy than having children. Um, the second thing is, you know, are you sure you're straight? Because, you know, straight is really boring and mm -hmm. oppressive, right? To be straight. I mean, literally, I just read an article this morning in San Diego schools, they're teaching that heterosexuality is oppressive. Mm hmm unbelievable yeah. but you have to look at the big picture here and you look at their their overall goal what happens when you have two women that you know woman decides they're lesbian or or a man decides that they're gay or bi or whatever but you know even in a in a bisexual situation it's like those situations don't really produce um stable families and, but with, especially with gay, um, lesbian and trans, those relationships don't produce children easily. The people that produce children in those cases would have to use um, different ways. You know, I mean, a lot of lesbian a lot and gays of don't- of surrogacy now instead right. of adoption. And I'm but... totally against surrogacy. I'm against surrogacy. I, I just wanted to show you this. It's just your, not of nature, you know? To, to your point, uh, there is a straight flag now. This is what it looks like. They made it the most boring. Now imagine you're a kid and they're showing you all the options in kindergarten. It's like, look at all these different colorful flags for all these different, you could be pansexual, you could be um, bisexual, you could be lesbian, gay, transgender. And then the straight flag is black and white, oh, like a prison. Oh, 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 actually, I'm surprised the bars weren't straight up and down to show the prison. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and so you'll get the little kid going. Well, I like the rainbow. The rainbow's great. And then the teacher's like, "Well, maybe you're a lesbian." Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Can you the marketing oh, there? Right. Straight. Oh. Boring. Right. I have and to I'll laugh at it. And you know what? Our but our population levels for for the peoples of the West is declining to the point we're not at replacement level. Did you know that we're not at replacement? I didn't know level. that. And Europe has been below replacement level for quite a while now. So, I, uh, I a, yeah, a lot of that is because of all of this. It's feminism. It's LGBTQ. It's um, it's also the Jabberwocky. Um, I have a friend who I won't give away too much, but she's um, been a, a specialist in a field for a long time, for like 30 years. And um, she's uh, discovered some very frightening things. Um, and she has had all of her, uh, her theories and, you know, she's taken, she's got x-rays and ultrasounds and whatever. Um, she's had all of these things corroborated by a number of high-end respected doctors, um, you know, gynecologists and whatever. And what they're finding is without going into minute detail, because I can't give, uh, you know, because I'm not a medical person, but I will say that the Jabberwocky affects um, the sperm and the testes and the ovaries and this is something there that, are yeah. serious changes 
there's a tremendous amount of stillbirths. Um, there are um, birth abnormalities if they do live. Um, the placenta looks scary. Um, in fact, I'm going to say I'm going to say this. My friend can, in an ultrasound, can tell the difference between. Um, Okay, I'm going to use different words so I don't get in trouble. Yeah, because I will. This one will come down, I, and I know there are studies. I've been reading some of the studies, but this is one of those lockdown things that YouTube is like the big show. They are absolutely okay. like you cannot talk about anything, even studies. Facebook too. Facebook, okay. you know this. They'll take it down. They right. say even if it's true, even if it's a peer reviewed study. I had a post taken down and that's when I read the new TOS. It says their new TOS says they'll remove it. Even if it's true and factual, if it could cause Jabberwocky hesitancy. Huh. Well, the Jabberwockies, you can tell in the um, ultra soundy duties that yeah. the um, Modernicas um, look different from the Pfizeropakies. Okay. That's weird. Yeah, I will look that up. They look um, different. No, no, no. It's very early days. I'm getting okay. inside. I'm getting oh, okay. firsthand in, inside information. I, I kid you not. And I, I, I'm, you know, absolutely, um, hand on heart. Um, this is God's and we honest will, truth. We will make this clear. This is anecdotal. This is coming from someone Julian knows. We cannot. We are not making yeah. a claim. I mean, I would um, verify, but um, they would lose their um, their their job. So um, a lot of the work that they're doing is, um, uh, you know, under the table and the cooperation with various Dr. Rudy's is also um, still very, very early days. Yeah. But, um, it's amazing that when something's new like this, that you can't even ask questions or talk about it or say what could be the, you know, this is a new, um, what, if it were a new medicine, for example. Yeah. And you were told that we've got this new medicine. It's going to fix this thing that ails you. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to allow you to hold the pharmaceutical companies liable if there's any side effects. And also it's not old enough for us to have longitudinal studies to know what any potential side effects are, but uh, we want you to take this. And also if you ask any questions about what potential side effects could be, or if you try and share any studies yeah. th that people are doing, then um, we'll have to we'll have to shut you down. But what's Do you, weird you take is it? It's in the, <laughs> it's in the Pfizer Rudy's um, own paperwork. It's yeah. in it. What that some of the things that they're saying about um, shed duties and about um, oh, gosh, it's hard to find. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, one of them's gonna be like. Right, and having to do with the um, sperma rooties and the um, egg rooties and the um, the um, over rupees. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, this is sad. This is just this is duty, sad. all of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's just one big duty. It is. Um, it's one and, big duty. And so, you know, for anybody listening, if they're considering to have the the you know the yes. doodah the jab a doodah, um, please don't. And if you're thinking about giving it to um, any young people that are of childbearing age, please don't, please don't. Um, trust me on that. I've seen pictures. Uh, I, I know this person personally. Um, it's very bad. Um, and uh, it's, it is gonna have a serious detrimental effect on all of, um, all of, well, Everybody. Yeah. one thing that we can talk about is, um, for now, is the fact that the, you know, to go back for a second to, to what they're doing with this generation of kids and teaching them that it's normal to decide to, to feel like you need to change your whole body to live as the opposite sex. That's, that's not normal. It, it has never been the norm. It's a fraction of 1% of people who grapple with that. And I've talked to many trans people, trans adults who are like, I wouldn't wish this on a kid. Yeah. Why are we t trying to tell kids that this is something that, that everyone needs to grapple with and come to a decision about and then, and then rush them through these medical and, and surgical 
procedures, which will leave kids sterilized, as we mentioned. Like, why are they doing this to an entire generation of kids? That's why they're doing it. <laughs> That's exactly why yeah. they're doing it. They want to steer. Well, there's, it's, there's, there's two things. One, well, no, three. One, the medical industry is making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Two, um, depopulation. Uh, three, destroy the family because there's strength in the family. They are so they want the to destroy the family. So for all of those reasons, that's why they're doing it. Because, and the reason they want to destroy the family is that they want government to be your, your parents. You know, you are citizen and the government is mommy and daddy. And that's, that's what they want. And that's what they're trying to get. And that's also why they're even doing experiments where they're trying to grow. Um, I mean, in fact, I think they were successful in China. I think it is. They grew a lamb um, inside a false womb, you know, like outside a, a, a sheep's body. They grew a lamb in a, in a false womb. And I think it sounds very sci-fi and insane. And as you can see, I love sci-fi stuff. <laughs> but, um, but it's, um, it's true. That's what they're doing um, because they want that complete control. You know, you're not allowed to have a child with your own body. So, you know, we'll do it for you. We'll choose how the child is going to be made and we will make it for you. And that child will not have a parent. That child will have um, a government. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just found this article that you're talking about, about the lamb. I had not seen this before. Um, can you guys see this? This is from a couple years ago, a few years ago, 2017. Yeah. An artificial womb successfully grew baby sheep and humans could be next. The lamb spent four weeks in the external wombs and seemed to, seemed to develop normally. And... They have a picture here. It says inside what looks like an oversized Ziploc bag strung with tubes of blood and fluid. Eight fetal lambs continued to develop. Um, yeah. I just worry about where I things mean, are headed. This is just an affront to God and to nature. And, you know, and I, I, like I said to you before, I'm always a big picture person. So we can talk about these particulars, but all of these particulars lead to a big picture. And um, I do absolutely believe that they want to depopulate us, um, especially the West, um, especially the peoples of the West and the tribes of the West. And the reason they do is because we are the most individualist leaning tribe, um, like Western European or Anglos, you know, we are the most individualist um, leaning tribes in the world and they want us to go. And that's not to say there aren't individualists from all other races. There, there are, but it's not the majority. Like if you it's look the at the way that the, this country happened to be formed. Yes. We were formed in a spirit of rebellion. The United States was all about overthrowing the shackles of authority and starting a government that respected individualism. That's where our roots are in those, right. that belief in the individual. Right. And that's what they're trying to tear away. And so if they can't tear it away, they will depopulate it away, right? So they're, they're, they're trying to tear it away. They're depopulating it away. They're um, changing people's sex. They're, you know, getting people to be women to be feminists, embrace careers so that they can have their worker slave and not have a woman who's having babies, right? Mm. All of these things all come together and lead to this. It's, and look uh, at all the stuff they saw us as empowerment. It's all... Hedonism, which leads to a lot of times self-destruction, not always, but, you know, yep. that sort of uh, empowerment in drugs, alcohol, lots of meaningless sex, like all the vices, all the things that keep yep. you kind of cope, coping mechanisms, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they take yeah. their toll, you know, they do. I mean, I, I, I didn't have a... Uh, um, you know, a squeaky clean life. So, oh, me either. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not saying this out of, um, you know, I'm, I'm like little Miss Pris going, oh, shouldn't do that, you know. But I had to do the things the hard way. I think maybe you did too. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's interesting because a lot of people who are against, I mean, this is a huge segue, but, you know, back to the whole, um, Christian um, nationalism or, or the Christian ethics and morals and stuff. There's a lot of people who 
aren't Christian that say, you know, religion, especially Christianity, is just a way to keep people in line. You know, they just wrote this stupid book so that people just, you know, they obey, right? And you can look at it that way. I guess you can look at it that way. But I've, I've come a long way now in thinking about the, the Ten Commandments, for instance, and the advice of Jesus. And the things that are said, yes, they're rules. They are. However, the rules aren't there as if God is saying, right, I'm going to keep you down. I'm going to make yes. you live the straight and narrow. No, the rules are there um, because honestly, if we follow them, we are happier. Yes. Julianne. Okay. We came we to the happier. same conclusion. We I've started, yeah, I've started thinking about them more as um, what if instead of thinking of God as the authoritarian father, who's like, you know, like the father from Dirty Dancing. You can't go dancing. Why? You know, like it's just just wanting to have that thumb on you and control you. Instead of thinking of God that way, thinking of God as a loving father who's saying, because I know that if you live within these guidelines, you are going to have a more blessed life. Yes. That's because I love you. Yep. Yeah. And he wants the best for us. That's it. It's It's really pretty simple when you think of it on those terms. And when you look at the effects of all the other things that go on when we don't follow that, all the horror that goes on in the world when we don't follow that, then you see why. Then you see why they're there. You know, I've started reading this other book that I'm gonna mention to people if they, yeah. if they want. Um, it's called Mere Christianity, um, C. written C. by C.S. Lewis, yes. And it's very interesting. I mean, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I've only read like the first third, but he talks about, I mean, he hasn't even gotten into the Christian aspect. He talks about God and he talks about um, this kind of intrinsic inbred, not cultural, not historical. Okay. Mm -hmm. This intrinsic inbred God law that is deep within us that runs so deep that no culture or whatever can change it. There is something deep that was given us by God at the beginning of time when we were formed in the womb, a sense of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And we all have it. And a lot of us choose not to, not to, um, not to, not to follow those rules. Like we all know what we ought to do, but yeah. we don't always do it. But intrinsically, and I'm talking intrinsically, I'm not saying culturally, I'm not even saying historically, I'm saying something intrinsic in, in us that tells us what is right and what is wrong. And, mm -hmm. and that, again, I mean, looking at that, you think, wow, where'd that come from? You know, where'd that come mm -hmm. from? That's, I, I, that's hard to put into words, but that's, that's how I feel a lot of times um, when I've I read certain things or I come to understand what certain verses of the Bible mean that maybe I didn't understand before. I'm like, Oh, I get that. It, but it all resonates in this place within you. That's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes well, there's plenty sense. of things I don't understand in the Bible, yeah. but I'm still going to say I'm a Christian. <laughs> oh and, yeah. And I still am a Christian. You know, I'm not just going to say it. I'm, I am because I, that, yeah. <laughs> I'm figuring it out. I was yeah. afraid to even tell people I was a Christian for a while because I'm like, look, I don't know anything. I'm just learning. So I don't want yeah. people to be like, well, this Christian said, you, this, you know. Yeah. But no, and, and, and also <laughs> there's a minefield within the whole um, the whole Christian movement and the and Christian churches that can be really hard to take for somebody that is, you know, I was brought up agnostic. So um, it can be really hard to take because you can get this kind of scary group think inside the church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other people who maybe aren't such fierce rebels, they think, oh, but, you know, if I go to this church and I want to fit in, so maybe that means that I have to, you know, pepper my language with uh, praise God and God has been working in my life today and, you know, hold my hands up to the sky while praying with my eyes closed There's because no... I, I look across and I see all these other people doing it. It's like, oh, okay. So they're doing it. So I guess, I guess I have to do it now, you know? Mm -mm. No, uh, I don't like that at all. I don't either. Yeah. 
And I, I don't, I will never like, that's not my, that's not the, the, I don't ever want to let those types of people scare me off again from, from God or from worshiping with fellow believers. And, and I just, and if that's the way you want to, um, to be, that's okay. I just, I can't, I can't be that way. I'm yeah. not going to be that person. That's like, yeah, I you mean, know, what I, mean, I love about my church is that it's like, there's all the, there's all these lovable weirdos and there's not this sort of, a uh, um, like in some churches I hear there's that sort of, I don't know, it's that same old thing, but in the church form of like keeping up with the Joneses and yeah, it's some awful. kind of virtue signaling thing. Yes, and, and I don't, I don't have to deal with that. And I'm, yeah. and I will not. And if you try to put that on yeah. me, I will not. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, I want to appeal to people who are, especially people who are agnostic or atheist. Um, you know, and, and I mean, uh, I'm, there's a lot of atheists that are very, very intelligent, very well read. And, you know, and I want to say, look, just look at why do you have this inside you? Why do you have this deep sense of right and wrong? Didn't come from your parents, didn't come from your upbringing. It's way deeper than that. Why is that there? Why is it there? And also look at history. Look at what historically, um, why Christianity and why the West rose and became what it did it is that it's that ethic and moral underpinning and we can't deny that it's just it's i think it's just it's almost arrogant of humans i mean what are we we're these little peon individuals that you know have a limited amount of intelligence and we think that we know it all we think that we can do it all we don't think that we need um something over us that guides us, you know, I, I mean, there comes a point when we just have to be a bit more humble about life. That's it. Humble. Because it, what I think it is for a lot of people when they first start opening their mind, the possibility of God. And for me, cause my mind had been so closed for so long and I did, I thought of myself as an open minded person, but I wasn't. And, uh, it first, I think for some people you see evil first. And once you acknowledge evil exists in the world, and you're like, okay, evil is a thing. Then you're able, better able to see good and to and to open your mind to the possibility of God. And that's not always the case with everyone, but I think I've seen enough people where that's the trajectory. Yep. I just want to highlight this comment in the chat. Hey, Tracy from Keto and Crime. Tracy's got a great true crime show. If you like true crime, we just did a, a fun episode on her show, me and Mike Harlow. Oh my gosh, um, I love hearing that. I love that. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So, she's great she says yeah she says i'm an atheist and my morals come from religious upbringing but now i'm starting to see maybe there's something more than us yeah wow that's sorry you've been there yeah i, I, I just i love that i just i love hearing that thank you so much i mean yeah i'm glad that i wow i'm really glad that i affected somebody like that yeah that's Julianne, I love you. I mean, you know, we're, it's just, it's like this world right now, we're in such a weird, hard time. And, you know, as I said, I'm a big picture person. I just, I look at the reality of there's a lot of evil in the world right now. And mm -hmm. we have a choice. Are we going to go the path of evil? Are we going to let evil run us and control us? Or are we going to choose good and God? And are we going to go on a good path? I mean, it's really that flip and simple. It's mm -hmm. that simple. And that's, you know, and that's what I choose. That's, and that's what I choose. And that's why I choose it. Wow. I love hearing that from that woman. Sorry. I didn't mean to get She's all. She's great. And I don't I'm have so a happy. tissue. So I'm going to be like. <laughs> oh dear. I'm yeah. so happy you came to talk with me today. Uh, it's just good. It's yeah. good. It is. Thank you. Um, oh, well, she's got a specific question. You know what? Nobody's asked me this before. Okay. So I might get in some trouble trying to articulate it. She says, um, Carrie, what are your thoughts on reconciling faith with being gay? Well, so I think I, maybe I have talked about this once with dangerous rhetoric, maybe not, but, um, there are some things that, so as I, on my path, um, uh, that I've been more, I struggled with more resistant to of, my old secular way of thinking and thinking I know better than what God says. Right. And so one of those, like when I first became a Christian, I'm like, 
yeah, but how important is it that you abstain from sex before marriage, you know? And I, I was kind of, I was resistant and God started working on me and he, I, every, I, it's hard to explain it. I, I would be opening my Bible and it would open to a similar verse. Somebody would tell me something. It would be about that same thing. It was all about this part of the Bible about taking off the old self and putting on the new self and about sexual immorality. And he kept hounding away and hounding away at me. And I'm talking about for like months. It was a long time that I was fighting what God was clearly trying to tell me. And so finally I just surrendered to it. And I just said, okay, I don't understand it at that time. I didn't, I don't understand it. I don't know why you're telling me this is a sin. Um, but I'm just going to try and behave as if I do sort of like how Jordan Peterson says, behave, he behaves as if he believes there's a God. I was right. like, okay, with this particular thing about sex before marriage, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do what you want me to do, even though I don't agree. Right. <laughs> and, um, and what do you, over, but I, I'm, I'm over curious time, though, what do you think about the gay thing? Yeah. So I'm getting there. Cause that, okay. this relates to it. So okay. over time I came, I think to understand why God said that just by practicing what he wanted me to practice. And, um, and so as I'm saying that because that's the closest analogy I have to the gay thing because I have not struggled with um, same sex attraction or desire, or I have not, that's not something I have. It's not something that I have to right. be like, I don't personally am not, um, um, that's not, that's not something I have to reconcile. Um, we all have, there's a verse in the Bible, how we all have our own thorns. Right. Yeah. So I try and compare it to that to see what I would think about that. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe that's something that I would have, if I were gay, maybe I would have continued to, to say, well, I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm just going to ignore that. And maybe God wouldn't have worked on me in that space. I don't know. Maybe he would have. This is probably not a good answer for you about what I think about it. I think God says it's a sin. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot of things God says are a sin and it doesn't, I don't, I think sometimes people, Christians, especially the Christians I grew up around focus on some sins more than others. And they focus on other people's sins more than their own. And they make it all about like, I have to get my friend who's now opened themselves up to a belief in God, but they're gay. I have to get them to see that being gay is wrong. Oh, why? Yeah. They are on their own path with God. Yep, They've opened the journey. That's yep. the journey. And I haven't been in their shoes. So how do I know how God's talking to them? I can say definitively, I think God says it's a sin. Um, I'm more concerned with what he says are sins that I'm doing. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I have some theories yeah. about um, about gayness. Okay, um, which you know, I mean, for anybody gay listening or anybody who's friends with someone gay or lesbian, I'd be really curious if you ask them if this rings true at all. What What is interesting is that um, the people that I've met that have been gay have been, and and I by gay I say gay and lesbian. Um, is that they've had one of a few things happen. They were either abused um, by, you know, a parent or, you know, somebody in a, in a position of um, authority above them, okay? So whether it be a parent, a priest, um, you know, uh, uh, an uncle, an aunt, whatever, okay? So they were either abused or their first relationship in, I don't know, high school or around that time, you know, as a teenager, their first relationship was from someone else who was gay, who, um, you know, introduced them to that. Or they had a traumatic experience, i.e. they were raped. And that might have been from someone who was gay, who was like predatory or whatever, and they were raped. Um, and that could be whether it be from a person of authority or even just like a peer that is your age. Mm -hmm. Now, what can happen in these instances is that, um, you know, say if it's a female and she's abused by a father, a stepfather or an uncle, there might, by that abuse, it might be that they they equate the abuse with men so much so that they hate men and they don't want to have, I mean, there's a lot of lesbians that, 
you know, are thrilled about the fact that they are a quote, gold star lesbian, which means never been touched by a man. Well, there is a man somewhere that did something pretty heinous to them for them to hate that much, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the case of um, like, you know, I met this one, uh, and this is just, this is anecdotal, but time and again, it's, this is rung true for, in my experience, the people that I have spoken to. Um, gay makeup artist, raped when he was younger, gay mm -hmm. ever since then. You know, th this is the conversation that Josh Slocum from the Disaffected Podcast keeps trying to have. Who's gay man? Um, and he's sort of like, you're not allowed to even have this conversation in society yeah. to even talk about like um, homosexuality and, and, you know, nature versus nurture and, and that, you know, yeah. that you're not even, it's not, not acceptable. Uh, Brentley in the chat who, who said certified homosexual. <laughs> He's a certified homosexual. He says most gay men I've met lacked male role models. That's possible too. You're yeah. not allowed to talk about that, Brentley. But, um, but, you know, I mean, the, the thing is, is that they're convincing themselves that it's nature. And I don't necessarily mm -hmm. agree. And, you know, and the whole thing with trans, know. it's like there is a spectrum. I mean, right. some people say that I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. Well, you know, I, I never, I mean, I can be, I'm definitely an A-type female. I mean, there's no question. I'm very forceful. Um, but have I ever wanted to, um, you know, have a, a penis put on me and have my ovaries removed and my, you know, my genitalia changed? No. I have no desire to be a man because this is the way God made me. I was made a woman. And whatever my brain is doing, I've, I, I make peace with the fact that I've got male-like tendencies in the way I drive or how forceful I am. But when but, you were you know, a kid, you... I was a tomboy. I was yeah. climbing trees. I, you know, like, yeah. I, I like to wear pants all the time. I mean, I've got a picture of me in kindergarten. And you got to picture this. So we're all in this jungle gym. And all the girls are on one side in their little dresses and everything. And all the guys are on the other side. And there I am in the middle of the guys with my little stripy <laughs> shirt and my pants. Like, <laughs> See, I think if this gender ideology stuff had hit when we were younger, we may have been, I may have been susceptible yeah. anyway, because I probably would have been, you know, I felt like an outsider in a lot of ways. I was yeah, the weirdo. It's, and it's, it's criminal. Yeah. It's like, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with our bodies. It's our heads and the way that we're perceiving it. You know, mm -hmm. God made us all with different attributes, different mental attributes and different physical attributes. And, you know, but embrace it don't Can try I, and change it yeah i want to because um tracy's still uh, tracy says uh she's still in the chat she says twist i was abused by a stepmom most of my friends are men and i've been with men but i know i was born gay um just a final thing i'll say about that because it's not something i've dealt with and i i don't have answers on it and but if you are someone who is a uh, new and opening and and i think either open newly open to the idea of there being a God, or maybe you do believe there's a God and you're in a walk with God. If that is something that is a struggle for you, like that question, if you have questions about it at all, then I would, I would talk to some like a pastor or someone you trust and see what they think about it. I'm, and I'm happy to recommend people to people that I respect who I would go to with my, who I have gone to with things that, that I've, questions that I keep coming back to. If it's something that you're not worried about, then I'm not telling you to be worried about it. I'm just saying if it is that, something, yeah. then that last, um, I, I can't see it anymore. It's, it's gone. Um, oh. the last comment, I don't know if yeah. you can pull it back up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she says she's dated men. She's been with men, but she, she was born. Right. Gay. But what was her first relationship? Was her first relationship with a woman? I'm know. curious. Tracy, her, are you still around? You know, her, her first experience, um, was it, you know, with a, a really close girlfriend when she was a, a little girl, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, playing doctor or something, yeah. you know, it's that yeah. it could be that, but By you know, the way at the end of the day, I don't think that, you know, I have my opinions obviously. And so do you Carrie. I mean, we're both mm -hmm. very opinionated about how we see the world and whatever, but I will say that none of my opinions are absolutely set in stone because I remain open to the wisdom of God and truth. Mm -hmm. And that's it. 
right? And so for her to say that she believes that she was born that way, well, I guess my only thing would be to say to you, um, that's fine if you believe it right now, um, but at least um, do yourself and God a favor and remain open to mm. whatever, um, whatever you might just dis be discovering in your search for truth. You guys should meet, by the way. Tracy, <laughs> again, there's so many people I think would just dig talking to you. And a lot of people showed up in the chat today for who have shows. She does a, Tracy does a show about, um, as I mentioned, true crime, but she's an amazing thinker. And I think you guys would have a great conversation as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, I don't want yeah. them to think, you know, no judgment on my part. It's like, you know, I mean, they, they live their lives. It's not, it's not for me to judge. It's for, you know, the judgment to be within them and within God, right. Their relationship with God. So that's, it's not, it's not, it's not down. That's to right. I, I only talk about, well, to go back to this thing about being a Christian and about sin and different, if people ask me like Tracy asked, I will, I will answer, but it's, I don't, I don't have any, uh, what's the word? It does not concern me so much about like what, like taking um, an account of what everyone else is doing what, wrong according to the Bible or what God says. Or, yeah. And so yeah. I don't spend a lot of time. It's just not that important important to me. And I know that there are some Christians who I've had experience with some Christians who will say that um, I am a Pharisee and I'm enabling lies because I'm not out um, condemning people. And that's just, I don't agree with that. Yeah. That I pisses me off. That's, and I'm, it's people like that that caused me to leave the church. Exactly. <laughs> it is. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have, um, uh, I don't have any problem talking to people when they ask me and guess what? I think maybe because I am open and I'm not a person running around uh, rebuking people or whatever that they, people do. Friends do ask me, well, what do you yeah. think about this? I do get the opportunity to have conversations with people because I'm not like, and I don't ever want to be like that. Sorry. Now we're getting to, yeah. you I and know. I should talk off camera. I know. I'm no, I, yeah. Like I don't, that. I don't want to be one of those going, <laughs> no, 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 you know, no, it's no, it's I will say that. the most important things to me when it comes to speaking truth and like God is truth is um, on a like a societal level and where we're going and what we're doing in the direction this 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 culture that we're in now that's telling people that lies are truth and truth are lies like yes. that's important for me. I feel compelled every day to yeah. speak against that against my old ideology. I do yeah. not feel compelled to line my individual friends up against a wall and take a catalog of of you know, this is what you need to change about yourself. No, I do not think God calls me to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, for, for this woman who, you know, is gay and believes that she was born gay, et cetera. Um, I mean, all I would ask for her and for other people that might be in the same situation is look at history, look at how Western civilization grew um, and look at the strength of the family and the nuclear family, which was, you know, a man and a woman having, you know, married, having babies, right? Look at all of that and where that strength came from. And then look at your own individual life and choices and then see how am I, how am I, um, how am I improving, uh, our world? How am I improving our world with my choices? That's, mm -hmm. that's it. And, you know, no judgment for me, whatever they want to do, but that's the question. And so I think there's, I think the, the issue with the whole LGBTQ thing is that it used to be um, in my day, you know, when I was a youngster, um, that the gay community actually reveled in being on the outside of the norm. They actually kind of liked it. It's like, look, hey, you know, I'm gay. I'm choosing this alternative lifestyle. I'm not trying to hone in on what you've got going on as a hetero. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of doing my own thing and I'm perfectly fine being an outsider. Somehow that's changed. And so now um, the people who are being ostracized are the heteros and the ones that are the accepted group are the LGBTQ. Now I've already 
said how that is leading to depopulation, mm -hmm. which is not, not good for the West, right? Not good at all. Um, but following on from that, you have to wonder how, um, how these people, um, God, I completely lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Well, yeah. how it's no longer about, um, like what's the, the norm now is being, uh, you know, it's being marketed right. oh. to kids. It's like, you want to be queer. You want to yes. be trans. You want to yes. be all these things. The norm. What happened with them embracing yeah. being that alternate, you know, the alternate, um, uh, being a rebel lifestyle. Yeah. I, you know, if, if they want to do that, I, that's fine. I, I, when I push back, when I push back is when I feel that it is to the detriment of our civilization. Um, and when they push forward to be the norm versus then the alternative, that's a problem. That is a yeah. problem. And yeah. that's when I push back. It's not a judgment thing. It's just, it's not right for you to take away from the norm. The norm is a life affirming norm. I mean, it's normal for a reason. It's life affirming. It brings life forth. That's the you know bottom line. Gonna... Well, it's kind of like they're trying to make, first of all, they've attached a value judgment to the norm that's not always there. Yeah. Like, like um, you know, uh, if you if you were to say being right-handed is the norm, it doesn't mean that left-handed people are inferior. You just stated yeah. a fact, right? <laughs> are you left-handed? Left -handed? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just not the norm. But so because they've attached... That's also not to say that there's not a lot of really stupid, ridiculous <laughs> heterosexuals out there either, because there course. are. Yeah. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> I'm one of them. But... <laughs> but... But uh, it is it is like uh, because they've attached that value judgment. So now they're trying to say we have to normalize these things that have never been the norm. We have to normalize them. And, and when they use that word normalize, they mean in terms of value. We have to say this is just as equally valid and it's just as equally prevalent. Well, no, it's not. That's why it's not like factually it is not the norm. It doesn't mean that it's like inferior. You should treat people differently if they're not straight. Like it just means it's, yeah, it's not I the mean, norm. It, and this um, whole business of, I don't, I have, I've never treated a gay person differently. Never, ever. I can't, ima I I can't imagine friends. you doing that. Yeah. I've never, ever done that. I won't do that. I just, I. I but you I, know, this will be clipped and they'll be like, homophobes. Oh, I'm so, oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, just, um, I don't care if they're, you know, but it's just, it's sad for the person that might clip this and twist it and say something else. It's on you, baby. It's yeah. on you. It's Deceit. not on me. Yep. That's what um, it is. One last one from Tracy, because I really like this one. Thanks for hanging out in our chat today, Tracy. She says, if I do return to faith, I will love God and love my wife. If he loves me, he will know my heart. He will. Thank you for for sharing all that you shared today. It's, and it's, it's really all about that. I mean, it's really about your relationship with God and then, you know, your relationship with your family your relationship with your community, your relationship with society and civilization. Mm -hmm. It all stems from here, from, from inside us. Yes. Yeah. I, um, I want to have you back and I want to have a panel show with some of these interesting people I think you'll dig talking to. I'd love so, to. So will you come back sometime? Of course. Okay. Absolutely. I love this. You're doing all the technical stuff, so I don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm doing tech today, guys. I figured it out. I'm yeah. putting the chats up. Got it going. Oh, I'm doing a last minute plug. So my film, Fear mm -hmm. Frequency, you can get it on YouTube. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on um, Google Play. It's a really cool, compelling film. It kind of delves into this whole idea of this kind of elites, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. It's very kind of conspiracy theory. I actually play um, a blogger conspiracy theorist, right? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting. And um, it is a compelling film. I'm going to say that. And I mean, a lot of people have really loved it. And um, I hope you guys watch it and like it too. And if you do like it, um, please give us a review because it helps. Um, and I'm just going to say for any artists out there, just one other thing I want to say, mm -hmm. you know, we did this film and we made it on a, 
you know, I mean, I don't know what we're going to say publicly, but we made it on a nano budget. Okay. And, um, but it's good quality and we made sure the quality was good. Um, for all of those people who are artists out there that say, oh, you know, I really wish I could, you know, finish my album or, um, or paint or um, make a film or be a model or any of the things that you want to do in the arts, do not let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Find a way and do it and do it yourself. Find people that will help you do it, that you can join it. Like, you know, for film, obviously you can't do the whole thing, I, you know, yourself, unless it's just you and it's, you know, a computer camera or whatever. But what I'm saying is there is a way to do things. Don't wait for other people. Don't wait for the establishment. Don't wait for those people to approve or give you money or whatever. You find a way to do it yourself. And I cannot tell you, how empowering that is when you start thinking outside the box like that. It all ties in. I mean, art and parallel society, it all ties in. We have to start thinking like that. We have to start thinking smart and creative and get things done. You, thank you for that. I couldn't agree more. Let, let uh, Ripaverse and his success be inspiring. Let yes. Julianne be inspiring for you. Go check out her film. Uh, Tracy from Keto Crime says so she's going to review it on her channel. Yay! Thank I'll you. Show up for that. And um, uh, what else was going to say? Oh, remind me off camera. I also there's some other people. You you know there um, Josiah Rises who has a very popular channel on YouTube. He's sort of taking the Ripaverse model and doing it with um, series and film. They are working on a film right now. It's going to be called Epic Verse. They're trying to produce content now again small budgets and everything, but try but in terms of creativity and not being bound by woke ideology, like yep. they're going to win. Fantastic. And so there's and so many know, people do try, starting to do this. Speaking of YouTube, I mean, I'm assuming that you're putting this on YouTube and we're limited by YouTube, but hell, you know, put it on BitChute, put it, put it on rumble, you know, get it out there on the other side, because eventually all the people are going to be, you know, the people that get it, the people that still want to remain individualist, the people that still believe in Western civilization, they're going to be saying bye bye to YouTube. You know, yeah. they're going to be saying bye bye to Twitter and Facebook and all of those other things. Because really, you know, I mean, I'm on Facebook right now because that's where my following is. However, I can't wait to say eventually we'll be yes, gone. Yes. And it needs to happen. It needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Julianne. I, oh, it was this has been such a surprising, fun. I mean, it shouldn't have been surprising because again, we always talk about all kinds of things. Um, her movie's Fear Frequency, guys. Go check it out. Next time she's on, we'll talk about it and um, just look at some of these. Thank you, Julianne. And you know, I love her. She needs to come on with Cameron. Yeah, I think they would love it. And uh, there's some people saying they're going to pop into Friday Night Tights. So I'll see you guys there. Um, have a beautiful weekend, lady. You too. You too. Cool. So wonderful to talk to you. Really. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.